my time actually on some of the reforms that are needed, particularly around the patient centered ideas. We've heard some other comments already about lowering costs, and I want to address some inaccuracies that were mentioned by some of my colleagues, Mr. Levin and Mr. McDermott, which regarding health care savings accounts and that only wealthy people uh, use these accounts. It, it's important to note that according to IRS data, the IRS, only 20 percent of HSA account holders, they have family incomes below $50,000. So these are, you know, below $50,000 incomes. And 83 percent of HSA account holders, they live in neighborhoods with median incomes below $75,000, 83% of those account holders. And only 2% of account holders actually even spend or contribute up to the amount of the maximum amount you can contribute to an HSA, which is like 6550 bucks for a family. And if clearly if wealthy people were taking advantage of it or using it, why wouldn't they contribute up to the maximum amount if it was some tax shelter? And, and finally, uh, just to mention, 24% of Americans, I mean, this is like a quarter of the population across the country, have an HSA or an HRA eligible insurance plan that they can participate in, which is actually a really, really big number. I personally think we need to go more in that direction because people appreciate the choice of flexibility when it comes to uh, uh, making sure that they can use health care for themselves or for their families from a consumer perspective. They want to be able to shop around uh, for the best quality care at the lower cost, just like they can shop for anything else. And uh, it's probably one of the reasons why there's such a high percentage of Americans now, 20 million, that are using HSAs actively. In Minnesota, you know, we have a population just over 5 million people, but 800,000 people uh, have opted now for some uh, health savings account eligible health plan, which is a big number. And I just really believe, and I think we're hearing some more conversation on some of your testimony today as well, that these HSAs should be a central component of health care, uh, that these accounts give more people more choice on how to use their health care dollars, control over the care that they receive, and ultimately, they're going to be smarter consumers. Um, and I'll just say also, I've introduced legislation, the Health Savings Act, with Senator Hatch in the Senate, that will expand the use of these HSAs uh, and make sure that people are able to lower their costs. Uh, the bill would allow more people to access these accounts, including seniors who are in Medicare, active military personnel, uh, and active military uh, members of the, uh, of the military, Native Americans who are enrolled in Indian Health Services, and members of health care sh sharing ministries. And I'll just say right off the bat, after I introduced the bill, positive comments are coming in from some of my constituents. I hear from Aaron who said, this is a great idea. I love my HSA as it makes me into a health care consumer. Robert uh, put out, I think he put on Facebook, he said, thanks for taking this common sense step to help defray our health care expenses. And then finally, Ed responded and saying, why aren't these available for seniors uh, already? And so I think this is moving in a positive direction. And we also, with the bill, will make sure that we are going to be expanding what the accounts can be used for, as Ms. Jenkins had mentioned, for instance. But we'll be able to prevent, um, include preventative care prescription drugs. Health insurance premiums will be included. Over-the-counter medications without that doctor's prescription. Physical fitness programs, so wellness, uh, nutritional supplements, and membership fees for innovative direct primary care models. So clearly these accounts can be a key solution for everyone who is dealing with higher health care costs. And you know, Mr. Roy and Mr. Antwell, I know you've written a little bit about this as well. You've talked about it. Anything else you want to just share about the importance of these accounts and how we should make this a, you know, a highlight of the reforms where we're trying to go? You've made a lot of great points, Mr. Paulson. One I would emphasize in, in what you alluded to is that health savings accounts have the potential to transform health coverage for the poor. Imagine if we took the cost-sharing subsidies that are in the ACA and converted those into health savings account deposits. That means if you're sick, you can use that HSA deposit to pay off your deductible. But if you're healthy and you stay out of the hospital, that HSA can accumulate and roll over and generate compound interest. And over time, that person who today is low income with negative net worth can actually have a positive net worth, pass that nest, off, neg, uh, nest egg excuse me, off to their children, and you actually can transform the entire economic trajectory of that family and future generations of that family. So that is the power of health savings accounts. They can do more for poor people than any other approach to health reform. Good. Mr. Antos, anything else to add or final, final seconds? Uh, well, we have a long way to go. Oh. Right. But beyond that, uh, yes, absolutely. A, a properly funded system that includes HSAs, uh, with uh, smarter regulations so that people can actually buy the kind of coverage that they, they need uh, will take us a long way. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Black. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank